Hello, everyone. Hello, can you hear me? Can you hear me, everyone? Yes. All right. Um, yes, we can begin. Uh, the weather, the weather changed, so we decided to have this as a remote class today. Now, um, last week I introduced you to the course, and um, today we're going to continue from where we stopped from last week. Uh, before we do that, uh, I want to show you. Uh, the class web page in Canvas. Uh, the, I, I, I explained last week that each week I'm going to be posting announcements of what will be due each week and what to where to re, uh, focus your attention for this week. So I want to show you basically how uh, your classroom, uh, the, the kind of announcement I'll be posting every week. Uh, I'm gonna look for it. It's somewhere. Okay, let's see. Mm. Well, let's let me just log into the classroom and see. Go from there. The computer is froze. Okay, let me uh, try it again. Yeah, the computer system froze. Oh, it's on froze. All right, let me share it again. The class is Morgan. And I'm gonna log in. Yeah, class. Your yeah, class is 101. Yeah. You can see the screen, right? Everybody can see the screen. Yes. Very good. Excellent. So I'm going to canvas. I want to show you the announcement I made for to this week. One moment. Yeah. And this is your class right here. And this is the announcement for the week. Uh, the title I gave it is with two activities and assignments. So every week uh, I'll be posting this announcement. Usually I post it on Mondays, uh, but this one I posted this one on Tuesday. But from now on, it's gonna be on Mondays. When you click on it, you will see what you are required to do this week. The first one, is to read the assigned materials, which you can find from the file section. And the assigned material for this week is letter two, frequency distribution and the graphs. So to, 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 to assess it, you go to files, see the files. So I'm gonna open it now. I click on files and then, um, you yeah, look for it in the file section. You can see where I have um, lecture two, frequency distribution and uh, graphs. So that's what we have in this week. I you click on it to download it. So click on download and it download it. And that's what we'll be working on today. And even next week, a part of it will be done next week. Uh, so this what I just did uh, shows you where you can locate reading material. You can also locate the reading, reading materials from your Pearson My Lab. I've set up your account. Uh, I, I think I'm going to close some documents here so that we can be able to access the other documents. So I'm going to close this one. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna share this one. Uh, this is the canvas. So um, I don't know how many of you have checked 
the canvas for um, to see if the Pearson, my lab is working on your sound because there's a homework there now. Okay, let me see. Now, if you're on their computer, can you do this with me? You click on the course materials. Okay. On the course materials, you see your class 101. You click on this to get your access code. Once you get that, then go to this section, my lab and mastering. Hope you can see this. Yep. Go to that section, my lab and mastering, and then click on that. Then log in and enter your access code. So you see, open my lab. I don't know how it shows on your own side, but once you get the access code, go here and click now so that you can get in. Okay, uh, I would like you to do it now and tell me if you are successful. Everyone. So for me, all I have to do is to click on it and then I, it will open, I can show you the assignment that I have created, the homework that is due this week. So I have the homework. Um, it's homework one which you can accept from my assignment section, and I will give you the homework one. So when you click on this link here, you can begin the homework. Now, like I told you, uh, you have already, be, you have already uh, in charge for the test book. So you can accept the test book from here. That's why I say e-test content. You see where you have e-test content. And then you can accept the test book as well and read. Now, how many of you have done that? Uh, please, if you have questions, ask me. I don't. I don't respond to chats in the class when the, when the class is going on. So, if you have questions, just ask me now. Any um, I saw that yes, you said that it was homework due tonight. So, is it due tonight or September fifth? Well, the, this one is homework that is due um, on Sunday. The one that is due tonight, I'm going to give you after the class. Oh, okay. Yeah. But have you gone into the my lab and mastering yet? Were you able to get in? Um, I'm trying to log on right now. I'll let you know in a second. Yeah, remember, remember you go to um course materials to get the access code, then go back to my lab and put the access code. Who else have was well, have been able to get in yet? Have any of you gotten yet? Are you still trying? I got in. Yeah, oh, very good. Excellent. So uh, that takes care of it. So that means um, please uh, try and get in as well as soon as you can so that you can begin your homework. You can, if, you, if you want, you can start early. Hopefully, we'll be able to, as a matter of fact, that homework, I'm going to extend it to next week. Um, because um, we might not finish everything we need to do tonight, okay? But if we did, then I don't have to extend it next week. Now, having explained this and having explained how to get access to my lab and mastering for your homework and tests, I'm gonna show you one more thing. When you finish your homework in my lab and mastering and get your grade, you may not enter your grade book immediately. I have to, I, I might, sometimes it doesn't enter directly. So if you don't get to see a grade in grade book, grade, the grade book in Canvas after you finish, don't panic because I'm, I'm going to transfer the grades to Canvas grade book. Now, here is the summary of the assignment that you'll be doing in this class. Um, here, I'm gonna open the assignment section. And you can see they have the attendance, classwork. Yes, I have not set any, up any test and exam yet, but I have homework. You don't get it through the homework from here. You go to your homework from my lab and mastering. So, but I will put the grades here. So this space is not for you. 
is just for me to put a grade. Then the project and the final exam. Now, um, apart from the project and final exam and the classwork, every other work will be done in my lab of mastery. Any questions for me? Any question class? No. All right, so now I think I have given you enough information. You can now start. Uh, tonight, what we have, I think I downloaded, I did it download is, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna close this section here. I'm gonna close a lot of sections. Okay, let me close so I can have access to other sections. So I'm gonna close this. Okay, close this. So I can have this one. So this is what we have, frequency distribution and the graph. Now, last week, I explained to you that statistics is a branch of mass that deals with the collection, analysis, and interpretation of numerical data. Now, before you can interpret that, those data, you have to present it. Uh, there are two ways. Um, sorry, there are, there are two major ways of course, what we use to present data. First, we can use a frequency distribution. Another way you can present it is to use uh, graphs and charts. Let us start with the frequency distribution. Um, so when we have um, any um, distribution or a table that consists of classes and their corresponding frequencies, uh, we call it a frequency distribution. So and we have two types. One is the categorical type, and the other one is the grouped frequency distribution. Um, I would say that both of them are almost similar, except that um, because they are all grouped. Even the categorical uh, frequency distribution involves grouping, except that we use it for nominal data or ordinal data, while the grouped frequency distribution is used mainly for uh, quantitative data. So under the categorical type, uh, we put the data set into specific categories, such as blood group, gender, political affiliation, and so on and so forth. Now, for the group frequency distribution, in this case, we have a large number of data sets. We now uh, group them into classes. Right, you know? So we'll come to that eventually in a few minutes. Let's see. Uh, the categorical type, an example. It says here, 25 amine inductees we are giving a blood test to determine their blood type. And this is their data set here. It says to construct a, a frequency distribution to present this data and then interpret your results. So the, what we're going, we're going to do is to um, construct a frequency distribution for this, and then um, interpret the result. Now we are given a raw data. So the first thing we do is to make a table of values um, that will involve the blood group and the accounts. So you can see right here, you can see blood group, frequency, and uh, percent. Okay. Now for the A group, how many of them we have? We have, we have one, two, three, four, five. Because, so that's why we have the frequency of five. And for the B group, we count it from here. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven, you can see the seventh here. So we follow the same process all the way to the last one to get the other frequencies. Then we add them together to get the total. So um, I'm gonna get my book, okay. Now for the total, uh, I can show you how you can get the total 
um, have this five, seven, nine, uh, four. Now, use a calculator. Uh, if you don't have a scientific calculator, there's one that is free online. Uh, it is called Desmos. I hope I have the, um, I think I opened so much pages here. Let me see if this page will work. For Desmos online, um, we can um, use that. So let's use Desmos and it's free. Just type uh, Desmos. Com, and it, it is also scientific. Uh, so it puts scientific. So it, you have a scientific calculator right there. See? Now, for what we are doing, we're trying to show you the uh, sum of this to add all this. So um, we have it in this form. On this most, we have that. I wrote them down, so I'm gonna write five plus seven plus nine plus four, 25. And that is how we got the 25 as our total here. Now, this is basically the frequency, the categorical frequency distribution. But we, 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 you, you might be asked to get the percent for each of these uh, block groups. To get the first one, you do five divided by 25 times 100. So you can see right here, five by 25 times 100. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that using a calculator. Uh, so you're gonna get um, five, uh, I think, I, think it, I better put them in parentheses, five, divided by 25, okay, then times 100. I see it's 20%, see? That's how we get the first 20, see, 20%. So you follow the same process, I get the rest of them. For B, we get 28%, for O, at 6%, for A, B, 16%. Now, for somebody who doesn't, um, who is not a, uh, a verse with statistics, when you look at these numbers, they may not understand that they saw the percent, they show, sure, they know what percent is, but what does they, this result imply? That leads us to the interpretation of the data. You can see that most of these amount of T's are in group O, or you can just say that uh, most, um, that 20% of them belong to group A, 28% of them to group B, that six percent of them are in group O, and then sixteen percent in group AB. But the majority belong to group O because it is thirty-six percent. Any question? Any question, class? No, no question. Okay. Now we we'll look at the group frequency distribution. For the group frequency distribution, we put them in, in groups, in categories. Um, um, <clears throat> so we have a class and a frequency. The class, we call it a class and intervals. So the frequency is not how many of them that they count. Uh, let's uh, usually uh, an example we make this more clear. How do you make find out which class they belong? First of all, you decide how many classes we use, and then um, <clears throat> excuse me, you can now um find the, um, no, the frequency that belong to each class. You, but usually the, the question we give you at this level, especially, we give you the number of classes to use uh, in the um, yeah, cal calculations. But usually also we have between, can be given between five to 20 classes. Then once you decide the number of classes, you can find a class width and then determine the class uh, range of the data. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, for the class width, you can now go down. Now, the, the best way to do this is to use an example. Now, um, let's look at this example here. It says, 
the following sample data sets list the prices of party portable GPS navigators. Construct a frequency distribution that have seven classes. Then after that, um, yeah, after that, then you can control the frequency distribution. After that, you can now find the midpoint, relative frequency for each class, relative frequency, and class boundary. So this one asks us to use seven classes. So what we need to do now is to determine the class width. And with that class width, we can use it to form our class intervals. Okay, so let's see the smallest number here. If you look at this, I said the smallest number here is 59, and that the largest is 450. So to find the class width, use this formula here. Uh, maximum number, that's 450, and as minimum divided by number of classes. So I'm gonna write it down. Maximum, which is 450, and as minimum of 59, divided by the number of classes, which is seven. Why seven? Because the equation says here, use seven classes. Now, um, so you have, when you put this in the calculator, you're gonna have this um, maximum, which is uh, 450, and as minimum of uh, 59, divided by number of classes, which is uh, seven, 55.8571, 4, 2. Just stop at 55.85. Whatever it is in this form, just run to the next number, uh, which is 56. And that is how we got 56 here. And see 56 here. Now with this, you can start informing your class in Tava. Okay. Now, um, let's, let me show you from here. We have uh, the lowest number is uh, 59. So we start with that, put 59 here. Then our class width is 56. So you, you start adding 56 to 59 until you get up to seven classes. So uh, 59 plus 56, I'll show you. Um, you have 59, 59 plus 56, give me 115. And you can see 115 right here. You can see right here. Then you keep adding 15 and 56. 115 plus 56. Uh, 115. Okay, 115 plus 56, okay, 171. And you can see 171 right here. So you keep adding until you get the rest of them. Now on this side, because this number here is 115, so you, automatically this will be 114. If you decrease by one, then you keep adding 56 to that to get the rest of this. For example, 114 plus 56. You can see that 114, uh, 114 uh, plus 56, give me 173, uh, which you can see uh, right um, here. Okay, I think I missed something. 114 plus 56. Okay, let me do it again. 114 plus 56. I use 117, see one, it is 114. Look, you give me 170, which you can see um, right here. So we follow all this, come, keep, keep adding 56 until you get the rest of them. So this one is the lower class in Tava. This is the upper class in Tava. So it is now time for us to find the frequency for the count. How do you find the frequency for the count? We use tally mark. Okay. Um, let me uh, make it more clear by using an example. Just give me one minute. Let me write this down. 
lower and upper. Okay, upper class in Tava and lower class in Tava. I have 59 to, okay, so it's a class in Tava, okay. Okay, and then free, uh, tally. Then frequency. Okay, give me one minute. Let me write this down. And then we'll, I will show you how I can get this to 114, uh, 115 to 170. Is that a store we have there? 171 to 226, 227 to 282, uh, 283 to 2, uh, 8, 238. So 339 to 394 and 395 to 450. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go um take you to our a workbook where we can put these numbers in. I can use this. Okay. Uh, get to the three point six. I have class and tava. Uh, in Tava, then have your frequency right here, the telemark. Then frequency. Frequency, which you can represent with F. Now, uh, we have all this in Tava, 59 uh, to, 114, that 115 to 170, that 171 to 226, I got um, 282 to 226. 227, 227, 227, okay, 282, and you got 283, uh, to 38, and got 295 uh, to 450. And then, you know, you can add ones to get the total right here. So uh, you guys can see this, I believe. So because this, this section is more, is confusing to, sometimes can be more confusing to students. So I want to make it, uh, brought it to this side to fix, figure it out with you. Now, let us go to our data set. Excuse me. Um, it's right here. Okay. The first one is 90. 90. So you get to here and put your tally. Okay. That's one of them. So the second one is. 275. Now, 275 should be in this section, this group here. You put your tally right, right there. Next one will be, we we'll have 220. Uh, 220 should be in this group here. So you put your tally. Next would be, so this tally will help you to get the frequency. That's all you need the tally for, to, to make sure you get the accurate frequency. Because if your answer here is wrong, it will affect the rest of your answers. So uh, now, the next one we're gonna be doing is um, 130. And 130 uh, should be 
in this group here. Okay, I'm gonna put the palette, one palette here. The next will be, I believe, 270. And 270 will be in this group. Uh, 270 should be here. So you put the second palette. Uh, so next one will be this one here. 100. 100 will be uh, in this uh, group here, Pali. So next will be 400. 400 will be in this group right here. So you're gonna see 400, one Pali. Um, next will be the uh, 150. A 150 will be here. 150 will be in this group. This one right here. So you, you, you continue like this patiently. This, this, this part of the work, you have to be very patient. Next is 200. And 200 will be uh, in this group. Okay. 200 will be in this group right here. So and so and so forth. Uh, another two hundred next will be uh, another two hundred, which will be in that same group. Another two hundred will be here in this group. Another two hundred. Uh, next will be one thirty, and one thirty will be in this group. Uh, that is right here, 150, 170. Okay. Uh, this is the, I say, this is the um, challenging part of it. So when you follow it all this way, you will see that you get something that looks like this. After you put all the tallies. Here, the tally is four. That means 59 to, uh, actually this one is supposed to be five. Yeah, uh, if you, after the count, it's supposed to be five. So that, um, that's why you see five here. So this one will be eight, but this is one, two, three. The one that crosses, they make it five. So one, two, three, four. Then the one that crosses, make it five, six, seven, eight. You can see the frequency of eight here. So you follow it and see that you got the frequencies. So this is your frequency distribution table. Remember the question says, it says, um, construct a frequency distribution that have seven classes. And this is the distribution right here. And have seven classes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And these are the frequencies. Now, um, since so these items here are part in number, the total frequency will also be 30. So if you add all these frequencies, are uh, you gonna get that? We can even try it. Five, eight, six, five, two, one, three. Let's add it. So you can see that that frequency will be 30. So you have um find this like a calculator. Okay. Five. Plus eight, plus six, plus five. Oh, excuse me, that's five, plus five. Plus two, uh, plus one, plus three. See, it's 30. So the frequency, total frequency will be 30. Now, we have answered the first part. Second part says to find uh, the midpoint, relative frequency for each class, cumulative frequency, and class boundaries. So, in the midpoint, uh, I can take you to see, see where you can find the midpoint. Midpoint means lower class interval plus upper class interval divided by two. 
I mean, it's mean 59 plus 114 divided by two. So uh, 59 plus 114 divided by two. So you have to put it, put it the correct way in the calculator. You got, um, okay, 59, uh, 59 plus uh, uh, 14, is it 114 uh, plus 114, close it, divided by two. 86.5, and you can see it's written there. Okay. 87.5. So through the same process for this, this one and that one give me 142.5. And you get the rest of them, I, I, which you can see right here. Um, and I want to take you to where they finish all of them. Okay, you can see all the midpoints right here. So this number plus this number divided by two give me this one. This number plus this one divided by two give me that one. And so on and so forth. Any questions? Any questions? Okay, no questions. Good. Now for the, for the relative frequency, the formula is frequency divided by n. n is the total for this frequency, which is uh, 30. You see, it's sum of f equals to 30. So the little frequency for the first class would be five divided by 30. Okay, we have, um, for example, it's gonna be five divided by 30, 0.167, okay. And the little frequency for the other class will be eight divided by 30. See the answer to the first one here. So let's try eight by by thirty. So let's try eight by by thirty. Eight uh, by thirty. So I'm gonna change this one to eight. Let's see point two six 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 six, which, which means point two seven. Okay, point two seven. Okay, Let's see point two seven. So that way you get the rest of the relative frequencies, and they usually add. If you add all of them, you get one because this is a percentage. So this one means 17%, 27%, 20%. Then cumulative frequency is, um, to get that, the first frequency is the same, five and five. The next one is take this um, five and add to it. Okay. Now to get the next one, take this one here, 13 and add to the next number six, give you 19. So you follow the same process. So until you get the last one, this last one will be 27 plus three here, the third. Uh, and that will give you the final relative frequency, I mean, cumulative frequency. Any question to this? Any questions? No, no question. So this thing means that 17%, because all these things represent, uh, the prices of GPS, you know, that represent the prices of GPS. Okay, that means that what we have in our table means that seventeen percent of them, we are, we are uh, we have the price of fifty nine dollars to for one fourteen dollars, and twenty seven percent of them, which is majority, <coughs> sold for one hundred fifteen dollars to one seventy dollars, and so on and so forth. Only a few of them, about 3% sells um, at $3.39 to $3.94. To $3 so that's how you interpret this. Okay, any question? Okay. Now, I've shown you the, um, the categorical frequency distribution. I've shown you the group, the group frequency distribution. Now, let's look at some charts, so charts and graphs. To do that, um, we'll be looking at, um, oh, before we do that, I want to show you one more thing, what we call class boundaries, because some questions might ask to get the class boundaries. How do we get the class boundaries? Now, 
uh, we get the class boundaries from the class in Pava. Um, I, will, I will take you to where you can get it. All you have to do is to do, um, to do uh, the upper lower class boundary of the second class minus the upper class boundary of the first class. You subtract them and divide by two to get the number you'll be adding on the left. Uh, you'll be subtracting on the left side and adding on the right side. So let's do it. Now to get the boundary, uh, I'm gonna do um, 115 minus 114 divided by two. So I'm gonna have, um, I have this 115, 115 minus 114, uh, what was it? And divided by two, which is 0. 0.5. So um, on the uh, lower class in Tava, you subtract 0. 0.5. So 59 minus 0. 0.5 will give me 58.5. On the right side, that's the upper class for you, add 0. 0.5. 114 plus 0. 0.5, give me 114.5. On the uh, left in Tava, that is lower class for you, subtract 0. 0.5. On the right one is add 0. 0.5. So 0. Uh, 115 minus 0. 0.5, give me 114.5. Then 170 plus 0. 0.5, give me 170.5. So you play that way. You will see that here. I uh, will have 59 to 114, then 115 to 176. You can see that from 114 to 115, there's a small gap. Those gaps are closed by the boundaries. So when we use the boundary, there's no more, there's no more gaps. I'm close. All right, otherwise they serve the same purpose. They are not, nothing much different from the, what is, uh, the, the, the reason for having them. Questions? Any question? Okay. Excellent. No question. Good. Now we can proceed. Next thing are the charts. If you look at the histogram, uh, the bar chart, and if time permits, the pie chart. Um, let's start with the histogram. Instagram is a bar graph um, in which uh, the bars let, are closer together. Yeah, let me show you a simple histogram that we have here. See, this is histogram. The bars are together. And they represent the frequency of each data values. Okay. See? <clears throat> the histogram, let's start with the histogram here. It says, construct a frequency histogram. For the global, uh, for the GPS navigators, they give you this. You can use uh, class in Tava or you can use class boundary. Uh, it let us use, so all you need is the class in Tava and the frequency or class boundaries uh, and the frequency. Okay, let's, let's use the, uh, we can use the class in Tava to get our um, um, frequency uh, histogram. And I'm gonna take you to Excel. Excel make it easy for us to draw this. So I'm taking you to Excel. I think I have um, these numbers entering already. So when I get to Excel. Okay, no, it's not here. So let's see. I think I must have it somewhere at the bottom. Okay, it's not here. So let me check the second sheet. Okay, yeah, I think we got this here. See, price of GPS, price of GPS. Of GPS in the frequency. Now, you're ready to draw. So all you got to do is to highlight from here the numbers. Click insert. Okay, I think I, I, I click on insert. It's not um, highlighted. Once you click on insert, you're gonna look at the recommended chart right here. 
I can use any of this. Uh, this is a bar graph too. Click on the recommended chart. I can see that the graph is already drawn. See? It's drawn. Now, but all you have to do now is to format it. Because in a histogram, the uh, bars are close together. So, so but let us have it uh, put the axis titles. So you gotta click on this plus sign here, put axis titles. Uh, this is the GPS prices in dollars. GPS prices in dollars. And uh, okay, when you look at the uh, actual data sets, okay, they have frequency. Okay, that, that means we gotta put frequency. Frequency. This is the prices. Prices. Price. Now, again, to make this uh, this uh, bars close together, right? Click on one of them, any of them, then right click. Then um. Once you done it, click on format data series here. And it will give you um, something that will help you to bring the gaps together. You can see what you have the gap width. Keep closing it. Right now it's on 219%. So I'll click here and hold it to be closing it. Once it is uh, about 5% uh, or 1 to 2%, you stop. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. It's closing now. You just stop at number when it is two percent. Okay, I, I let at three percent. You can see the history right there. Now, um, assuming that this is a project that you are doing and you want to, you are asked to draw this on the project. You can add this to your project. I'm going to show you how to do that. First of all, I may open a project. Let me see if I can open a project from outside here. Okay, so I'm going to open a project. Suppose this is the project and this is a project I've been before. Okay, let me see. Alcohol police. Let's see. Let me use this project I wrote about. Uh, so I wrote about alcohol policy. Alcohol policy. Police. Okay. Yep. So this is my paper. This, this, this is the paper for alcohol policy. Okay. Now, what, you want to put this in the project. I didn't uh, put the project complete. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the right here. So, so you want to put it here. Okay. All you gotta do is to go to your histogram. Okay, I think um, I gotta. Uh, okay, go to your histogram. Then copy, control C, and then go to where your project is located and click control V. See your history I'm right is there. Then you can continue to type what you want to type. Questions? No. Good. Now, next thing is how do we interpret this? How do we interpret this? You can see that most of the GPS, almost more than half of them, fall in this group, say, cost between 59, well, I would say more than half of them cost between 59 to $282. Only a few of them have the cost from 283 to 450. And the majority of them, about eight, uh, the one that the, the, the more frequent price is uh, $115 to $170. Excuse me, it's the more frequent price for the GPS. So these are the things that you write, you know, when you, you analyze and you interpret data. Um, so that's how you make the histogram. Now, the bar chart, um, 
The bar chart is a different type of chart. Actually, the histogram is a special type of bar chart. In a uh, bar chart, um, I think I, I'm, I'm trying to get this uh, back, guys, back to the. Um, so I close this. I'll take you guys back to it. Um, our screen. Okay, but one elementary statistics. Okay, now, bar chart is different because we use bar chart for um, nominal or ordinal data. Okay, where is my bar chart? Okay, so we are asked to find a bar chart, then pie chart. Um, but there's one more chart, I forgot the, okay. I want to draw the bar chart, then after that, we can do the other charts. Uh, maybe I will leave by chart and stimulate plots plot for next week. So the bar chart, um, in a bar chart, uh, we use, if you use the uh, uh, nominal depth, I think um, I have a question for that somewhere. Okay, um, just give me one minute. Yeah, this is the question right here. So, the height of some breed of dogs are shown on the table below. So the breed is correct. Uh, the height is 60 cm. Chihuahua highest is 20 cm. And it says, um, and the rest of it, it says, construct a bar chart to represent this. Data. You can see that for bar chart, this side is names, not numbers. Then this side will be the, will be the numbers. So construct a bar chart for this. So let me see if we have a budget for that, then I can explain. Okay, let me see. No, this will not work. All right, let's do it, um, the bar chart. Okay. The you know, is even is even easier to draw than that. Let me write the num numbers down, the breed and the height. We have Corey, Chihuahua, Labrador, Fox Terrier, and Pekingese. So that is from 60 cm, 20 cm. 20 cm. Then we have Labrador at 45 cm. Fox Terrier as 80 cm. The Kines at 40 cm. Okay, let's put it in. Next cell. Somewhere. Okay. I got to lose some part of this. Okay. You can open this Excel. Only if I have done it before, but I'm going to check. Okay. See um, one, okay. I have not done it before. Uh, I don't think I did it before. Okay, let's do it now. System. I'm going to. So we have it here. Correct. Put in the put in the data. Everybody can see this. Okay, put in your data and then interpret. Okay, color is 60 cm. Uh, Chihuahua. Twenty cm. Hope you guys can see this properly. Yeah. 
la el proyecto. Por Fire CM. Oxperia. SCM. Is it SCM? Let me see. For it to be at least. How to, okay. Oh, four threads, four threads, 40, I thought, I wrote, oh, then the other one is 80, I wrote 80, 40, okay. A good year. Uh, Fox Terrier is 80. And the case will be 40 cm. So with this, you are ready to draw your bar chart. Okay. Ready to draw a bar chart. So what I have to do again is to uh, highlight it. Let's go to the insert. You highlight this. Then um, you go to the recommended chart. You can see right there already. Let's see this one, and then okay. So we can format the title and add the heights of dots. Heights of dots by breed. Okay, you have color come here. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Let's format. So we put the titles. Have the breed right here. Breed. And then height in CM. In centimeters. Yeah. And this is your uh, uh, history. Um, what do you call it? Um, Bar chart. Maybe you might want to bring them together a little, a little bit because um, bar chart shouldn't be together. So well, let's just bring them together a little bit. I right, click this and make it format buffer series. And I start closing the gap. Once you get to 100, you stop. Okay. That's your bar chart right there. So you can, from there, you can see that the first area is the tallest of all the breeds, followed by Corey. And Chihuahua is the smallest. See, from a chart like this, you can visually see what to say about a question or a problem. Any questions so far? Any question, class? Any question for me? No. Good. So we're supposed to do this. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, sir. This this gonna be the classwork. No, no, no. The classwork I'm gonna give you from one question from what we have done, so we can do it. No, normally we do it in the classroom, like check it in the classroom. But you can do it after they finish the class. I'll give you a question. You can do it and, and then upload it to me in the section that. So, you, so you're just gonna give us like one question of it. Just one question, yes, and it's a hundred points. It, it, it won't be, a, it, it's not a difficult question. It's just to, for you to practice what you did today, you know, and then All upload right. it after we finish the class. Just upload it for me before 11 15, 59, and then uh, I will take it. Okay, from there. All right, that's uh, so uh, remember, this is, this is not a remote class. This is, uh, we meet in a classroom, but because of the weather today, the weather is so bad. My area, I can't even go out. So, um, yeah, it's okay. crazy because actually I'm in the classroom right now. I didn't see email till I got here. In the classroom right now? Yeah. Oh, see, you see, that, that's why, remember what, the, the first day of class, I was telling you guys that I'll be using Remind. If you, if you have used Remind, if you have the Remind, you will have gone to the school. I will just send a message that I will not be there. And you get it on your cell phone. Before I even come yeah. to class. Yeah. I'm so sorry you didn't get the information on time. 
How many of you are in the class? What do you, is it only you? Yes, yeah, only me. Oh wow. Sorry about that. Well, we just, I mean, um, if you have a computer at home, just uh, let me. Since you're already in the class, by the time you get home, it might be late to submit you. So before you leave, just let give me your name. Uh, I can take your own. Uh, if you, if you are not able to submit it tonight, you can submit tomorrow. Email it to me. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, because by the time you, I don't want to, uh, those are at home can do it right away since they are, they are at home already. Okay, just don't forget to send me an email and then we'll, I'll take it from there, okay? Gotcha. Now, um, any other question before we continue? Yeah. All right, no question. So let's say, let's go back to uh, the presentation. Now, next thing I'm gonna show you is sometimes you might be asked to find the, um, what they call the uh, frequency polygon. Um, the frequency polygon actually do the same work that the frequency uh, the histogram does, except that it is a graph, a line graph, unlike the frequency, which is, uh, unlike the histogram, which is a bar graph. So it usually looks like this. And for the heat frequency polygon, what we plot, we plot the midpoint against the frequency. For the histogram, we are using the class and tava against the frequency, but for the uh, frequency polygon, we are plotting the midpoint against the frequency. So I showed you how to get the midpoint. Midpoint is uh, you add these two numbers here and divide by two to get that. You add these two, 150, 115 plus 170, and the answer you get there, you divide by two to get this one. So you, when you plot these two against this, you get the frequency polygon. Now, I want to show you something like here. Um, the class width, if you do, um, let me write this down. 142, 5, minus 86.5. I mean, I mean 142.5 minus 86.5. I'm going to show you uh, in this more, uh, in the calculator. I got um, 142.5. Okay. Um, why is it blocking it? Okay, I, th I think I need to sh share it again. Because this one is blocked, it didn't block. Right, so I can share it properly. Okay, for some reason it's... Um, Okay, 0.5 minus 86.5, give me 56. And if you do it for the other one, you see that you still get the same number. If I do 198.5 minus 142.5, 198.5, Minus 142.5. That's what I mean. This one here minus this one. You see that you get the same number. So I got um 198.5 minus 142.5. You see, you get some 56. So that means the class width is 56. Now, what we're going to do now is to show you how to draw the frequency polygon and complete it. So I'm going to write this down and we'll put it in Excel and then we can, we can then draw it. We have one point midpoint, which is uh, 86.5, 142.5, 198.5, 254.5, uh, 310.5, And the frequency is we have five, eight, six, five, two, one, and three. Okay. Now let's put it on Excel and draw the, uh, the graph. 
to have put on this. What side? Uh, why is this? This thing is just blocking the whole space. So I'm going to move this from here. So you okay. can. I can put this on the second uh, sheet of. Uh, okay, let me put it right here. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Okay, this is the midpoint right here. Midpoint. And this is the uh, frequency. F. So I have. It's six point five. Okay, one forty two point five. One ninety eight point five. Two fifty six. Two fifty four point five. Okay, three ten point five. This is the six point five. Um, now, another thing is this if you are, are already doing this work as I'm doing it on Excel, then basically you have done the class for you can just email it to you can just upload it in the canvas for me what you have done in the canvas. Then 422.5, that, that will be accepted. Okay. Now, otherwise, the class work is just one question. Uh, 5, 8, 6, 5, uh, 2, 1, and 3. Now, I said I can play tricks sometime, but let's see what this one happens. To happen here, you highlight all this and insert. Uh, choose the recommended chart here. Mm, I think this other one, this will not, will not have it. Let's see if this one will have it. Okay, we'll have it. Let me see. Uh, probably this one, but no, this one cannot give it. Choose until you, you, you just keep trying to find a chart that will give you. Exactly what you want for the uh, polygon. Okay, uh, this doesn't give us what you want. So what I'm, I'm going to play a, a short a trick on Excel. But sometimes this kind of thing happens. Sometimes there's a way to get around it, but I, I usually play a trick. I can just put this dot, dot here. Okay. Let me see what Excel can do. There's a way you can get around this, but I, this one is too quickest. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Let's see if this works. You highlight this. And then insert. See, it worked. <laughs> So now, uh, like an histogram, you put the chart titles and give these are the, the midpoints, um, which represent the prices, GPS prices. That's the price, it's got the prices. Price. And then the frequency. Now, GPS prices, of course, in dollars. Now, because this is, it, it is quite easy to hit again because it have to close it. So this is eighty five point eighty six point five. Now, the the class width is fifty six. So I'm going to do um, uh, 56, 86.5 minus 56, um, 86.5, um, 86.5 uh, minus 56, 
30.5. So that's, that will show me where to put the, 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 the last, uh, how to close it, where to close it on the left side. So 30, about, about 30.5, which should be located around this, uh, towards the end here. So I can just put it that way. I can just insert this. Uh, the shapes, shape from here. I can close it to all the way to that to the end. And of course, make it a thick line, like so that it will conform to the one I have here. And for the this one, it closes at the end. Usually, uh, you know, you add eight fifty six to to this number, it will give you a number that it closes at the end. So uh, you gotta close it so it can form a histogram. A histogram. You know. Okay. And then. So now if I if I let's, let's say I'm I'm I want to know how many GPS costs around the one for the one what one dollars. So I'm gonna go from here. So this is 1.2.5. So so I'm gonna go like from here. This is this is this line here. Present 1.2.5. You can see right there. So $41 should be around here. And here it's gonna go um $142. So gonna be one I mean $141 we can be all the way to this point. Follow it to this about seven of them and cause that amount. So this is your frequency polygon. Questions. Any question class? Okay. Now, um, next thing will be uh, to next chart that we'll be drawing. Uh, we got the frequency polygon. So you can see what is the sample here on the screen here. You can see right there. Now, um, cumulative frequency graph or, or guide. The honest um, graph. So we take um, a short break. Or what do you think? Shall we continue and finish at uh, uh, eight o'clock, or shall we uh, take a short break and then come back and finish up? What do you say? Hello, class. I'm okay. We'll keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Okay, good, very good. So um, next would be the OGIVE, multi frequency graph or OGIVE. Now this is a, in this case, in this type of graph, we plot the um, class intervals against the cumulative frequency. How do we get cumulative frequency? Uh, remember the example I gave you, um, how to get the cumulative frequency uh, once you have the frequency, you can get the relative frequency from there. Let me take you to where uh, we did an example on that. Okay. So if you look at here, this is the frequency. This is the cumulative frequency. The first one it is the same as the first frequency, which means five and five. To get the next cumulative frequency, you add five to the next to the eight, give me that ten. 13 plus 6 give me 19. So you add to the next frequency to get the cumulative frequency. 19 plus 5 here give me 24. 24 plus 2 give me 26. 26 plus 1 give me 27. And 27 plus 3 give me 30. So that's how you get the cumulative frequency. Now, for the cumulative frequency graph, you plot the class intervals at versus the cumulative frequency to give you a smooth curve. I think I have a, um, it here on the paper. Let me see, on the Excel. So we have, I think in the sheet, the second sheet, yeah, should be there. Um, I have, uh, okay, let's see. Um, well, I, think, I think I have a song where, I entered it before, I believe. OK. 
okay. Yep, this is where you have it. So let, let us get the cumulative frequency here. Now I want to show you um, in Excel, you can get it faster. Cumulative frequency. Okay. Remember the first one stay the same, put five here. Okay. Uh, you can see the screen, I believe. Now, let's see the first with the frequency. Now, to get the next one, you, you can calculate it from your Excel, put equal sign. Before you do any calculation in Excel, put equal sign. You click on five, type the plus sign, then click the next frequency. Then you press the enter key to so add it to get 13. Now, from here, you can drag it down if you calculate the rest of the frequencies right here. See? So these are the cumulative frequencies. Now, now that you got it, you can plot it versus the frequency. Let me see if I can delete this cell here uh, so they can be together. So you can see that they're together now. Excuse me. Um, I have to undo it. Okay. So I'm going to copy. What I'm going to do is to copy this on one side. Okay. Put it here. Then copy this multi frequency. Put it here. Okay, I think it's messing me up. All right, let me see. This can be typed. Okay, copying and, copying and pasting it to me, it messed me up. So I'm gonna do it a different way. I can type it manually, 59, 59, two, one, one, four. Now if that will save, save us the time, one, one, five. To 170. Okay. Uh, 171 to uh, 226. Uh, 227 to 282. Okay. 283 uh, to 338. Now, 283 to, sorry, I'm doing it second time. 339 to 394. And of course, we have 395 uh, to 450. Okay. Now the frequencies are given as five. The cumulative frequencies are this here are given as five, 13, 19, 24, 26, 27, 30. So this you can you know make the cumulative frequency graph or the or guide. Okay, so we are ready to do it. All you gotta do now is to, um, one minute, is to highlight this and install the appropriate graph to it. Let me see, I think this will do. Oh, oh excuse me, so, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. This should be, do, this one should do, I believe. All right, give me one minute. Insert this one. You gotta figure out the chart that will be appropriate for it. Right here, you can see it right here. So I'm gonna undo it so you can see the, the one that um, worked for it. 
to highlight it. Then you click insert. So I tried this chart, it, this one didn't work. So I tried one of these and it worked. See, you can see the, you know, with the frequency. Or if you like, you can use only the upper, upper intervals of that. That's the upper interclass interval. 114, 170, 226, you know. And then I think that should be that should be better to use one of these numbers here instead of using uh, two of them at the same time. I think that should be better. So let us try that. You put the, only the upper intervals. Other than that, you can see that it's very clear here. Um, so that you can use so let me delete this and use only the upper interval upper interval should be better so upper interval means that you're gonna start from 59 then 114 um so just go this way 114 only uh 170 that should be more appropriate. So only put only the upper intervals. Two to six, and uh, then two to eight, two eight two. Then um three three eight. Okay. Three nine four. Okay, three, three, uh, 450. So now you can draw a picture. That will give you a better graph. Okay, let me see this one can be. So this one is the blue. Let's see if I remove this blue issue. See, that's a graph right there. But then we have a problem with this, this side. So that's why. I'm gonna um, make it that way. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'll do, I'll do it. Okay. Now there's a way you can do it, get around this, but I, I usually, I usually this, this simple tricks work for me. I can see we are, these numbers, uh, I can, um, okay, Let's see if this works. Insert this, I see right away. So you can, you can, if you subtract 56 from here, you get the number that will be here, 114 minus 56. You do 114, 114, 114, minus 56, get 58. Um, which when you look at it, you can see that we have here uh, 59, which is, which is very close. What is the estimate? So around here to close it, if you want to close it. Now, you cannot format it by Putting the as this titles. Um, I call it cumulative, pre, cumulative the archive for GPS prizes. Data. Excuse me. Prize. In dollars, and then you're gonna have your cumulative frequency. Frequency. This smooth curve. So you can hear, you can say that um, about twenty of this to the GPS or less, we are sold for about two twenty-seven dollars, and so on and so forth. I mean, a journalist can write a full article on this short graph, but we with statisticians, we are more uh, concise, straight to the point. 
Um, any question to me or for me? Any question? No. Excellent. Now let's look at um now remember we started by showing you how to get the uh frequency distribution. Um if you remember our very first question, it says they give us this and they say uh construct a frequency distribution that have seven classes. Um and they give us this data set. We can even draw it using Excel without going through all these steps. I mean, if I, if I give us a, a different uh, uh, type of graph, but if you, look, if you compare it to what we have, they will look similar. How do we do that in, a, in Excel? And actually that would be a classwork. I'm, I'm gonna do an example now. And the one you would do by yourself would be a classwork. You do it and then, you know, Upload it for me. I'll give you the data set to use for that classwork. Okay. So, and basically, this is the actual the data set you do use for the class for this one. I, I would like you to use this one here. Uh, the prices. So, so it is now you that will type it in in Excel, and follow the steps that I will explain. I will I explain here now to complete this one for me. So the one I'm gonna be using for doing this is this data set, this one here. I have a data set already. Uh, my data set is for, uh, let's see. So what I have, yeah, my data set is this. Uh, oh, not this one. I think it's located on this side. Okay, this is my data set. Um, so my data set is like this one. I don't know exactly what price, what this number represents, but it's, I want to use it to make a group frequency distribution. We'll show you how to do it. Now, what you need to do is to figure out the smallest number and the largest number. And how do you do that? I mean, the, the, the process I follow, to make it easy. You can sort it out. You can sort the, um, the data set. Uh, so I can highlight them. Then sort them out, so from smallest to largest. So once I highlight them, you see we're here, it is called sort. I click on it, see where it says sort smallest to largest. I click on that. If you sort, you can see that the smallest number here is 100. And the largest is 134. So I can use any class with I want, which there, except I call it bean. Bean. So I use bean. So my bin, I might use, uh, these numbers are so, so close. So I might use something like three for bin. Uh, Cause the largest here is 134. I can use three, three. So I can use um, my bin as, uh, oh, excuse me, I think I typed the bin wrong place. Bin should be at the top here. Uh, bin. Let's say that this, this, uh, these are the prices. I don't know what price is. But let's say these are prices. And this is the bin. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna use my bin. First one is 100. Okay. And then if I use three, let's say it's 100 plus three. Uh, 100 plus three. I keep adding three until I get the last number. Let me see how much, how many it will give me. Remember the highest is 134, and I stop at 136. So with this, I can draw my histo my frequency to the polygon, and even a gra uh, um, histogram at the same time. What I have to do is this. I click on data, 
that I see total analysis right here. Now, if this does not exist in your um in your Excel, because it doesn't it, Excel doesn't have it by default, you have to add it by yourself. How do you do that? If it doesn't have if it has it, then, then you can just use it. But if if it doesn't have it, what you're gonna do is just go and click on file and then click on options here. And then um, add-ins. Then once you click on add-in, uh, something is blocking it here. So I'm gonna move it up. Once you click on add-in, you can click on go. It will bring it this to this dialog box. You can see what you have, data analysis two pack. You will check it and then check the second one. My own is already checked. That's why it's showing here. Once you finish that checking and then you click OK. Once you do that, you can see that this will show up in your Excel. And that's what you need for that analysis. So you're gonna do, um, um, uh, so, so you click on data, data analysis. Okay. And as soon as it opens, uh, you, are, you are going to do a frequency for a hist uh, group frequency distribution using Excel. It doesn't have the any uh, name that has group uh, that is called a group frequency distribution. So what you're going to use is use the histogram. So it will give you the frequency distribution and the histogram as well. Click OK. Now for the input range is the data. So click on here and then highlight all the input ranges. Okay. All right, click on this. Then for the bean range, click on here and highlight the bean range. Okay, now you remember that as I'm highlighting that, I, highlight, I also added the, uh, the name when I was highlighting them, which means I have to check the label. Now for the output range, output range means where I want Excel to add it for me. If I want you to put, it, put them here, I can just click output range and then check where I want Excel to put it. If I want to put it on this section, I can just put, put it right here, okay? And then of course I want the chart output as well. That's the uh, histogram. And then that's it. Click OK. See, I still have given me the it gave me the frequency right here. You can check, you can check this one as the interval. Okay. And when you look at this, you can see that it gives it also gave me a histogram by the side. See? Which I can remove this. And then you know close the gap like we did before. I click to close the gap. Okay, make it there. Uh, I close the gap. Hmm. And see right there. So it gave me the um, frequency distribution table and it gave me the histogram. This is what I want you to do in your classwork. Uh, but your classwork, you're gonna use the, this data set here. Use Excel. So I will know that you use Excel because you to give me a result that is similar to what I have. So use this, type in this data set and use it. Questions? Any questions? No. So I'm gonna mark you, check your attendance and you can log out and start doing the classwork, okay? When you finish, you can upload. Let me show you where to upload it. When you finish, you can upload it here for me. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see, I have to log in, log into. Um, if you don't, see, if you don't finish it tonight, just finish it tomorrow. It is nobody's fault. And that the weather, the weather is uh, messed us up today. So if you don't finish it tonight, don't panic. You can finish it tomorrow and submit, okay? Uh, because this, this is something that we should do in the class. And in the classroom, 
it is be more easier for you because I'll be there and you can ask me the questions. But here, um, so uh, okay, good. So you get when you finish on it, you you click on assignments, and you can see where I have classwork. Click on that. Then I don't know how it should on your end, but it will show somewhere you can where, where you can upload it. Let me see if if I have it here because it must it should show where you can upload it. Uh, yes, yes, it will show on your end where you upload it. So you upload it and then that will be it. If you cannot upload it there, you can send it to me as an email, as an attachment to an email, and I also accept it. Any question before, we, before I check your attendance? Any question, class? Hello? No, no questions. All right, let me call your name, Sam. So you, the rest of the time will be uh, 30, 20, 23 minutes for you to finish this and then, you know, and like I can say, if you, if you can't finish it tonight, finish it tomorrow. Um, Alex Johnson, are you there? Johnson, Alex. Yeah, huh? Yeah, I'm there. Okay, so if I call you, then after that you can, a lot of Johnson. How come I didn't see, I didn't see any. I, did you just register? No, it, it's, it's my other last name on there. A little bit of Alexander Gompel. G O N P U E. Say it again. I said G O N P U E. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see it now. Uh, Gompu, right? Alexander, right? Right or wrong? Say Gompu, Alexander, right? Yeah. Okay. How about this person? So, uh, Brian Hawkins, you here? Yes. So, um, I checked you now so you can leave. And then Deborah Hamilton. Here. Deborah, I got your email. Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So now um, I checked you so you can feel free to leave. Um, how about this person, um, Brown Page? Page, or oh, here. Good. Now, um, Martin Nadira. Here. Um, and I have a quick question. What's the file that we're supposed to be uploading? Oh, the, the, the last example I did. So you're going to use this uh, data set here. This one here um, is in the PowerPoint. So you're going to enter this data set in the Excel and use it to do the, the last example I did. Um, to, to, to draw the uh, frequency distribution and the histogram using Excel. So we had to do it through Excel. I wouldn't be able to like just do it in my notebook. So through Excel, right? Use Excel, yes. If you need it, um, you can watch, I'm, I'll upload this video in uh, Canvas. So you can go to, you can also go to, because this, uh, that, that, that is the last example I did. So you can watch how I did it and then follow the same process. Okay. Okay. And it's, all right. Thank you. Now, um, so who is Throne? T R O N E. Tavon Rome. T A V O N R O N E. What's that? What, is that your real name? Because I'm looking for it here. Yeah, my name Tavon Roan. T A V. Oh, Tavon Roan. Okay, Tavon Roan. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Bennett. Here. Uh, Meno. Is he a Meno? It's Manner, but I'm here. Man, Imani, Imani, man. Here. Montello, you there? 
You said Taylor? Yeah, Taylor. Yes, I'm here. Yes, Desiree. I'm here. Back to now, so you can leave. Uh, who else? Who else? Mohammed Idris. Idris Mohammed. So not here. Can go. Brown Page. I think I got everyone. You Mabu, haven't called me. Mabu, yeah, Mabu, Mabu, that's Dag Mail, right? Yeah, that's me, Dag Maui. I got it now. All uh, right, thank you. Welcome. I think I have everybody now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think one more. Okay. Have everybody. So I see you guys on next week, okay? Okay. Can I ask you a question first before you leave? Yes, sir. Go ahead. All right. Where where is that? Um, because I'm trying to find the PowerPoint, this this PowerPoint that you're on. Oh yeah. On Canvas. Um, you gotta go to let me show you. Are you in Canvas now? Yeah, I'm in Canvas now. On the canvas, go to files. You on files? Yeah, I'm following you. So keep going down until you see where it is um to be shown here. You can see right here, lecture two. That's that's it, that's it right there. So you gotta download it. Okay, I see that. And then as far as for the um um, cause I think I joined a little late, um, with the, with the, my lab, uh, mastering, you said the, you said the, um, the access code is in course material. Yeah. So you just click on course material. Let me see. You can course material here and then to get the access code. So right. once you get the access code from the course material, then yeah, you see, reveal access code. Then you can now go to my lab and mastering and put it in so I can get you into the class. Okay. Uh, so you can, yeah, hold it, yeah, hold it. Okay. I'll see you guys next week. How you doing? Yes, sir. Um, I just were, want were, to. Were you able to get into my, my, my lab yet? Yes. Yes, I have. Very good. I just had the same question as Brian about the PowerPoint, but you had um, showed us where to go. Okay, oh, good. Okay. Good. Yes, sir. So I see and, you guys next week. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Um, and I just want to say thank you for your response. Um, I was just freaking out. <laughs> yeah, Tim, I actually, you know what happened there? I, there are some other people that wrote, sent me an email last week. So I responded. I thought that yours is one of the ones I responded. Last week was so busy for me. So I thought that I just, that I just missed it. So that's why it, I, I, you thought I didn't get it. I saw every email you sent to me. Yes, sir. And I thought, you know, when you, see, when you thought you have already done something and you yeah. don't forget about it, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah. That's completely Sorry. OK. Um, I, I figured that was the case. I just wanted to make sure. That... But um, I appreciate it, and I look forward to learning more in your class. So no problem. So yeah, so yeah, um, the, for, from next week, so you'll be around. You'll be around in the campus next week, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, good. So because this class is actually in the classroom. Yes, sir. You just the, the word that did not allow us today. Uh, mm -hmm. This just happened, so we can we can't help it. <laughs> All right, I see you guys next week then. Okay, and one and one more question before you log off. Sure. So you sure. said we just, you said we just doing for the class where we're just doing the the histogram. Uh, the um the last example I did uh to use Excel to make a mm -hmm. frequency frequency distribution and histogram, but you 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 know you are going to use this data here the one on the screen on the screen which right. is on the PowerPoint. So you right. gotta type it in first. I used the example last last example I did. Follow that steps to do this, then mm -hmm. save it, then upload it for me in the classwork section. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. You're welcome.
All right, good Thank night. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. Let me close this.